Brilliant director John Landis is known, of course, for his films like National Lampoon's Animal House, The Blues Brothers, the list goes on. He joins us today to tell us about a special project he is working on in The Man who inspired him to become a filmmaker. Please welcome the incredible John Landis, the living legend. You just said it's interesting to see, depending on the country you're in, which film we choose. So what does that say about us Canadians? Well, not only which film, but what clip. So you chose to put on chaos. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anarchy. So I, but it was an homage to Mayor <laughs> Ford, I guess. I don't know. Oh, very well said. Let's talk a little bit about the catalyst that served for you to become the boy who wanted to work in film. You were eight years young when you witnessed Ray Harryhausen, who people may not know about, but that's why you're in town tonight, is to introduce one of his films. He inspired you through what film? Uh, well, he, he, Ray Harryhausen was a, an animator, stop motion photography. And there he is. Yeah. And Ray has a unique position in, in the business because he technically is a special effects guy. He's a stop motion animator, but he, really was the auteur of his films. He has a huge body of work that was hugely influential. And for me, when I was eight, I saw The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, a picture of his directed by Nathan Duran that was, at the, I remember it so well, at the Crest Theater on Westwood Boulevard in LA. And the movie successfully, that by the way, is not The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. No. That's, that's a movie called Sinbad's Golden Voyage. John Wayne's son with that centaur awesome. there. Anyway, um, The Seven Voyage of Sinbad is an Arabian Nights fantasy with cyclops and dragons and genies. and It just did what a movie's supposed to do. I had total suspension of disbelief. I was there on that beach fighting that monster. I, yeah. I loved it. There are certain movies that really transport people, that you just, you're there. And for eight-year-old me, it was Seven Voyages of Sinbad. And I went home and asked my mom, I said, who, who, does, who makes the movie? Yeah. And she said the director, which was surprisingly sophisticated. Mm -hmm. But so for the time I was eight, that was my advantage, really, because I'm a terrible example. I'm a high school dropout. I'm everything you're not supposed to do. But I wanted to be a filmmaker when I grew up. And I read that you and your wife describe it as the transportation business because she's done awesome costume work for many films rather than the movie business because you suspend that disbelief and you transport us somewhere awesome. And you got to meet your legend or your icon or your mentor, however you want to describe Ray. Tell us what that was like. He lived a long life and you met him, was it when he was 90? No, not at all. I, when I was 11, I wrote him a fan letter, oh. and I mailed it care of Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine, which was this, again, very influential, silly magazine that people like Spielberg, Lucas, Cameron, Jackson, Del Toro, everyone read yeah. Famous Monsters. It had a huge impact. Marty Scorsese, it, 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 it was really made for like 12-year-old boys, you know, and had lots of pictures of monsters, but more importantly, it talked about writers, you know, Ray Bradbury, Richard Matheson, Kurt Seodmack, Robert Block. It talked about directors like Fritz Long and James Whale. It talked about filmmakers, animators like Ray Harryhausen and Willis O'Brien and makeup artists like Jack Pierce. So it was a real window at a time when you didn't have all these making ofs and mm. stuff. And it, so I, anyway, I sent you this letter, letter and I mailed it off and the editor of Famous Monsters was a guy named Forrest J. Ackerman, Forey Ackerman, who is also an important guy. He's the guy in 1949 who coined the term sci-fi, um, but he was a very important guy and Forey took my letter and forwarded it to London, to That's Ray. Awesome. And when I was 12, I got in the mail this manila envelope with British stamps, very exotic. And there was an 8x10 glossy of Ray animating the dragon. And he wrote, Love it. To John Landis, best wishes for your success. And I think it was like the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Sure. I was beyond thrilled. It's, I still have that photo. It's framed in my library. And speaking of thrilled, Kevin and I have been debating Three Amigos. I, I just, I think it stands the test of time. He says, That brothers, is the oddest segue I ever I have heard. to, because you said the word thrilled, and thrilled. it leads me to this. Thriller, Michael Jackson, what was he like? You directed, you produced. Wow, what you went from like? Three Amigos to I did, because we like, don't have meow. any time left, okay. but I need to know. What was Michael Jackson like? Yes. When I made Thriller, he was fabulous. He was 
Uh, you know, actually, I thought he was 19 or something. He was like 25. I have no idea. But he was professional. He was brilliant and wonderful to work with. Did whatever you wanted. Worked hard. Um, did you ever think it would become the most iconic video music video of all time, which no, it is? No, no, of course not. Awesome. But he was, Michael was troubled. He came from a d very difficult, his father was a pig, or is a pig. I have no hesitation saying that. They were abused children. And Michael, uh, he's a tragic figure, really, because he's so brilliant. And I worked with him later on Black and White, and by then he was pretty insane. But I liked him. I liked Michael. I thought he was sweet, and, and he's a tragic figure. Well, you do brilliant work, and thank you for sitting on our uncomfortable couch. Well, John wait, is wait, the wait. Set. The whole reason I'm here is to promote yeah. the stop motion animation go series on, do my job. at TIFF Lightbox. Thank you, John Landis. And you should go. It's important. They're showing great stuff. Because stop motion rocks, and it inspired you to do your do. So check him out. As you mentioned, you will introduce 20 million miles to Earth tonight, 6:30 p.m. As you said, TIFF Bell Lightbox. For more information, TIFF.net. So what I'm hearing is John is agreeing with me, Kev. Three amigos wins. I didn't say that. Over. Okay, never mind. We do agree, though, that this is the most uncomfortable, uncomfortable couch, couch in television. And Kev also. <laughs>